It's time to react to cringy TikToks. And I see a really scary face on my screen here on the left, and I'm very much distracted. It actually scares me a wee bit, you know? This guy actually gives me f Ugh. Right, this gentleman, I heard of him, I've seen a few things of him which I actually think he got divorced with his wife or something or something happened and then he turned out to be acting like he's a billionaire when he's not. Like the watch he's wearing is fake, so that's fake as f right? There's nothing diamonds there, it's just a made in Turkey, made in China piece of sh right? This is a severe case of mental illness and I want to approach this carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. I know it's not, listen, I know it's not my responsibility, but I really, really want to point this out. This man is broken. He's not happy in his own skin. He's not happy with himself. He's so many insecurities and that's a problem. And for me to make fun of him, that would break my heart. But I'm here to tell you the truth. Everything he's wearing is fake. It's all fake. It's worthless. It comes from China. It's DHgate. It's Alibaba.com. It's all fake. Please seek help. Did I do that nice enough, you think? This is the world's fanciest burger. It cost us $27,000 to make. $27,000? Here's how we did it. We're gonna start by making a simple thing. What is there a Rolex inside? Fancy sauce, we're adding mayonnaise and ketchup. The ketchup's not particularly expensive, but it is organic. We're gonna thinly slice some onion. Now this isn't organic, but it is from a Trader Joe's. And a beautiful vine ripened heirloom tomato. Now we're gonna form our burger patty. This isn't Wagyu, but it is Wagyu adjacent ground beef. And now we're gonna add an ultra rare 1924 Cartier Rolex collab valued at $27,000. My uncle smuggled it out of a POW camp inside his prison wallet. Add that to the center. Another layer on top. Season heavily with salt and smash it down. Oh, you can hear the rattle in the watch. That's perfect. He's destroying that burger. Because that burger looks half decent, you know. We're gonna give that burger a flip and we're gonna add a piece of sharp cheddar cheese that's been aged for one month in my fridge. Scoop of fancy sauce, butter lettuce, Trader Joe's onions, very fancy heirloom tomato, and our Wagyu adjacent burger patty. Now crown it. Man, I can't wait to taste this. It looks incredible. Mmm! Mmm, mmm, mmm! It's still so fun! I know it costs a lot, but you guys gotta make this. This recipe is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's not very original because I've seen something like this before, but yeah. Do you like the Rolex Cartier collab? It's not a Rolex Cartier collab. Rolex and Cartier has never collabed. It doesn't exist a collab. So what's the real price of that burger? Uh, 20 quid? Fake sh piece of sh Like, what do you want me to do? It genuinely devalues the burger. Gladys Carrera? POV. One second. I'm I'm not a, I'm not a very fast reader, by the way, so I need to pass this, right? POV. It's 2030. You and the boys just submitted 40k income to the IRS. But I'll drive Lambos. We're matching APs and own penthouses in Miami. Doesn't ring a bell. Sorry, I have no recommendation of that. No. Jack. L. No. Staff. No idea. I don't recall that transaction. Do you guys have any milk? Absolutely. Nah. The Wolf of Wall Street is most probably one of my favorite movies of all time, but I don't think I'm the only person on the planet to say that, right? One of the best movies ever, right? Girls say if it's your favorite movie, you're a misogynist. It's like a red flag. Yeah, but, but men are misogynists. Like, females should be feminine. It's about balance. It is what it is. You know what the problem is, right? People have too much time on their hands to worry about stupid stuff I'm like nervous. this. Hmm? To give you an idea, 80 years ago, people were worried about being able to eat the next day because they were in a war. And Jordan Belfort, The Wolf of Wall Street is one of my favorite movies of all time. But Jordan Belfort is the biggest pile of I've ever seen in my life. Now, uh, this, Rimac. Um, fabulous car, electric. I think they were about a million and a half quid and it's that's the one I crashed off a Swiss Alp when I got to the end of a hill climb and for reasons I still don't understand, just carried on powering through and went off. Had a massive crash, um, during which, while I was trying to get out of the car, it landed upside down, it fell about 300 and something feet. I've told you this. I couldn't get out, hanging off my seatbelt, er, crash helmet on. Tried to get out and I got my watch caught in the seatbelt like that and I couldn't, ah. I thought, oh, somebody will come and get me. And then I heard the fire start and I thought, no, I really, really should get out. So the only way I could get out was to take my watch off uh, and, and push the door open and drag myself out because I'd broken my leg. And I was rescued, all was good, but I realized later on I've lost my watch. Uh, and the car had burned for three weeks. 
before they could go in it and somebody found my watch and it was sent back to Rimac with the car and they very kindly put the watch, which doesn't work, in this presentation box. Listen, we nearly lost an icon, a British icon. This watch nearly killed him as well. Never trust the sea dweller. Never trust the sea dweller. I have watches that I have memories with as well. Like, um, for example, my AP, my chronograph. Like, I wore that when my son was born. My story will be forever connected with that watch and I'll never sell that because I love that watch so dearly and it has a lot of sentimental values. But if you're willing to pay a good price, go to prideandpinion.com now if you want to buy or sell your watch. What you see here is the Rolex Sea Dweller reference number 16600. And depending on condition, the value of this watch varies between seven and 17, 18, 19 thousand dollars. But the average price for this watch without papers, you're paying about eight to nine thousand dollars. And a shit condition, seven thousand dollars. I would love to do a video with Richard Hammond because he does these reaction videos when he's hammered, you know, like reacting to influencer cars and shit. Hey, you just got to Miami in the hotel rooms. Niggas tell you that they like Oh, you don't touch someone's watch, you mock. That's identical by going out to a man and touching their balls. You don't do that. I actually think he's wearing a, if I'm correct, he's wearing a Richard Mille RM2704. I think, I can't see it very well, but that combination. The Rafael Nadal. That's the Rafael Nadal, which is worth about 2.5 million. If you could only wear one luxury watch for the rest of your life, which one are you picking? The beautiful AP Royal Oak chronograph with an amethyst bezel? No. No, it's beautiful, but no. I don't want to wear, for the rest of my life, a purple watch. This Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711 with factory blue sapphires? No. I like blue, I like that watch, but that is not an everyday watch, mate. F*** that. Or the iconic Rolex Daytona rainbow? None of them. Absolutely not. I support pride. I don't want a rainbow watch. Cough. What watch would you choose to wear for the rest of your life? I just like, a, like an everyday watch, like an AP or something, like a chronograph, like something is functional. A GMT, which is functional. Not something with f***ing stones. Off. Here's some watch brands you should definitely stay away from. Number one. Oh, I love these videos. Drop shipping brands. There are many brands out there that simply- Fact, fact, fact. Stay away, save up your money, or buy a Timex. Don't do this bullshit buy cheap watches from wholesale sites like Alibaba, slap their own logo, and sell the watch at 10 times or even 100 times the markup. Saying, oh, we cut out the middleman. These are luxury watches at cheap prices. Yeah, Fincero, f*** you. Suck my dick. No, they're not. These are the brands you might not have ever heard of before until suddenly you see dozens of advertisements from them. A lot of times because they spend way more on marketing and actually making quality watches. Next is- Like this guy's good point, good point, good point. Designer and fashion brands. Gucci, Armani, etc. Any watch with a trendy name and- Michael Kors sh And I remember, this is many years ago, I bought a Michael Kors watch for my that time girlfriend. She really wanted this Michael Kors watch, right? And I bought her that on a cruise ship. Why do you think I dumped her in the end? Michael Kors made f off. Any brand that focuses on stuff outside of watches but makes watches as a side, kind of like they're doing it to make a quick buck. They're gonna upsell the heck out of you, not because of the quality of the watch, but because of the brand name, of course. These are your Gucci's, Armani's. To be fair, if I look at fashion brands, in this case Gucci, that's a piece of sh don't go there. But Louis Vuitton actually is doing something really crazy. I know, I've made fun of Louis Vuitton many times. They actually introduced a watch that was a proper watch. May f hope so because they own several watch brands, including my arch enemy that's owned by Louis Vuitton, but they also own Zenith, right? And they also own Tech Heuer. So yes, it would be expected for a brand like Louis Vuitton to bring out a proper watch. Many fashion brands like Michael Kors, Burberry, and Armani simply outsource their watch manufacturing to Fossil, and they simply slap their logo on it, fetching a much- I'm not a big fan of Fossil watches, but Fossil is doing one thing very, very well. Fossil Group owns a manufacturer of movements, and these movements can be found in Zodiac watches. Actually, Fossil Group owns Zodiac. Now, Zodiac is a really cool watch brand with a big, big history. There was a time in history that the Zodiac Seawolf, the dive watch version, was more popular than the Rolex Submariner. It was a better watch. And the Fossil Group is actually doing really, really good stuff with Zodiac. But yes, they also do dog shit. I hate my $10,000 watch. While it looks amazing, I don't hate it, but it's not worth $10,000, my friend. It sucks to wear daily, so I fixed it. Which do you prefer? It's a nice looking watch, mate. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's about $4,000. So I called my bank and- Aw, oh, mate. Aw, oh, mate. This guy is delusional. I have seen this video and it angers me on a level that you have no idea about. So I called my bank, and when I called them, I asked for a quarter million dollars. Now, for me, a quarter million dollars is not much money. As you guys could understand, a quarter million dollars is not much money. When I called the bank... Suck my dick.
you piece of shit. Bank and said, hey, I'd like to pick up a quarter million dollars because I need it for my podcast. I want to show a little bit of money. They said to me, well, we're probably going to need for anything over $20,000 to make an order, which will take about three and a half to four weeks to arrive. Then we're going to need an armed guard that's going to meet you, walk you to your car, and make sure that you drive away with the money. So then I said, look, I need just a quarter million dollars and it's not that much money. And the bank pretty much told me, Ben, it might not be a lot of money for you, but it's a lot of money. But if that is not a lot of money, why is he wearing a fake Richard Mille then? Why don't you use that real money that you supposedly have to buy a real watch? Fake money, fake watch, fake guy, fake bullshit, fake influencer, fake. I'm done with this bullshit. This is what, what's wrong with the world, people like that.